Jet Blaze. That's the name I was born with, Jet Blaze. And then I changed it to make it show business. <laughs> and not pornography. Here comes Jet Blaze. There are certain words I cannot say. Did you know that? That's right. I, listen to this, listen to this. I can't say peacock, but I can say pee and cock. <laughs> I'm not allowed to wear shorts. No, that wasn't an NBC request, that's my wife's request. She said my legs look like two ivory Slim Jims. <laughs> funny to you, not funny to me. Not really funny to her either. Also forbidden, this is true, anybody who even looks like me is forbidden. That's true, that's in the contract, so say goodbye to the Wendy's girl, everybody. She's gone. <laughs> goodbye, Wendy's girl. That's exactly what I looked like in sixth grade. Say goodbye to Jimmy Neutron, kids, he's gone. <laughs> that's me the day that I... Yeah, I got bumped from TV. Uh, what? <laughs> That's the exact expression I had on my face. You're gonna do what? <laughs> and of course, ladies and gentlemen, it's sad, but say goodbye to Oscar winning actress Tilda Swinton. She's gone. <laughs> what crime did she commit other than looking like me? You know, I learned a lot about myself the last couple of months. This is a true story. Yeah, I'm not lying to you. I learned that I really have no marketable skills. I'm not putting myself down or anything. It's just that for 17 years, I've been honing this one thing. So you imagine me, like a couple days after I was done with television, going to the unemployment office and saying, well, I'm ready for my job. What is it you do, sir? <laughs> hey, don't worry. Check this out. I say, yeah. See what I did right there? And then look at that. And then look at this. That's what I do. Now match my previous salary. <laughs> I was beaten within an inch of my life. Now basically, last three and a half months I've had a lot of time to reflect. And this is the one thing I've learned. If you learn one thing, take it from me, never, ever, ever have time to reflect. It's horrible. <laughs> Never take a hard look at yourself, kids. You won't like what you see, at least I didn't. Now over the past couple of months, the biggest question I keep getting from people is, hey man, because I talk to Cheech and Chong a lot. <laughs> hey man. No seriously, wherever I go, it's, it's funny, but wherever I go, I'm famous kind of now for going through this strange experience. So everywhere I go, people are like, hey man, what's going on with your mental state? What's going on with your mind, man? <laughs> Wherever I go, I'm like buying a bug cake someplace. What's going on with your mind, man? <laughs> All right. Well, I'll be honest with you. I've had to work through a lot of issues. I went to therapy. Went to a cognitive therapist. I'm not ashamed. I'll admit it. And um, I learned something important. You've probably heard that there are five stages of grieving. Have you heard about the five stages of grieving? I think it's called the Kubler-Ross five stages of grieving. Yes, someone started to clap. Let's hear it for five stages. Five <laughs> stages of grieving. <laughs> no, you don't have to applaud it. <laughs> Ow, stages of grieving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo! I knew he'd talk about stages of grieving. I'm glad I brought my glow stick with me. <laughs> Well, there are five stages of grieving. And what I found out when I went to therapy is that there are eight stages of mourning the loss of your talk show. That's absolutely true. It's in the New England Journal of Medicine. Eight stages of mourning the loss of your talk show. First stage of grieving the loss of your talk show, and I've talked to everybody who's gone through it, is denial. I went through bad, bad denial. There was about six weeks where I thought I was still on television. I did. Every time I finished making love to my wife, I'd turn to a camera that wasn't there and say, stay tuned for Carson Daly. <laughs> but here's the sick thing, and he'd show up. He's a very caring lover. 
Stage two, blame myself. Folks, I didn't spend a lot of time on this stage because what the hell did I do? around me. Wife, kids, executives, God. Not just my God, everybody's God. I blamed a lot of you people in here. I'll talk to you about that later. Stage four is anger. As you can see how that would go right to anger. Stage four is anger. And I was angry not, not just about the fact that I wasn't on television anymore. I was angry that I'm not on TV and other people still are. That really started to get to me. Now, I don't want to get petty. I don't want to start naming names. But what I will do is show pictures of these people and name their names. I'm not on television, but Kim Kardashian is. She has a show. Yes. Kim Kardashian, that's not even a dress. Snooki has a television show, ladies and gentlemen. of meerkats has a television show. I was mad at first and I watched it. It is good. They sing barbershop harmonies, man. These meerkats are amazing. This guy covered in question marks has a television show. Look at him. He doesn't know that why he's on TV. He has no idea. Chris Angel has a television show. This is the extent of his act. He's peeking at people through a rectangle he makes with his hand. <laughs> that costs $800 in Las Vegas. <laughs> Boo, I see you. Where's my $800? There's a guy on TV called The Cake Boss who has a television show. Look at him. This guy is holding a whisk. I'm making a cake. <laughs> and not only does he have a TV show, he has an arch rival, The Ace of Cakes. I'm sorry, but that is a smug expression when you just make a cake. What do you do? Me? I make cakes. Uh. Two guys on television that make cakes. Me wandering around the house naked. No, 